and welcome to this week's uh, 20 minute interview. I want to just uh, point out that I'm really happy to see all the comments that you're leaving and that we have uh, like a growing amount of viewers. It's, it's really beautiful to see and know that you are following and um, just want to let you guys know that it means a lot for us. Anyways, today we invited Tom uh, von Osthausen from uh, Holland uh, to be the interviewer. And Tom used to work as a doctor, but now is a homopathic doctor and he teaches people in following their heart, right? Something like this? Am I right or not? Yeah, you can say that I'm not working as a doctor anymore now. No, no, I, I, that was what yeah. I meant. Like yeah. Once yeah. upon a time. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, here the interview goes to you, Tom. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, yes, I was. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I uh, used to work in lead as a doctor with a holistic approach. I did that for a long time. I did all do homeopathy, but I was mostly interested in the connection between uh, our thoughts and our emotions and our body. So the, um, the, I would like to interview Elisa about the connection between healing, love and fear. Mm -hmm. And um, but I see, he I says, see, super excited. <laughs> but I see a, a message, got it. Do I have to, to push the got it button? Yeah, yeah, you can push it, it doesn't matter. Because, because then I have more space. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, well, I, um, so as, as a doctor, I did uh, notice that our emotions and our thoughts influence our health very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also did see very often that in fact the body is a reflection of the mental emotional state of people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, science has uh, proven for a long time that everything is energy. Every form is a form of energy, right? Mm -hmm. And you can say there are vibrations with a kind of uh, frequency, with a kind of color. But anyway, thoughts and Emotions are also energy. Yes. So, uh, many people, it seems as though many people are not aware of this. So I would True. like to give first some simple examples, also for the people who are listening now, uh, because uh, the, the power of our mind is very big. In, 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 uh, uh, in medicine, it's known that there is a placebo effect. Placebo effect, that means that if you think that something will be good for you, then it works in a good way for you. Mm -hmm. And we also have the nocebo effect. And that means that if you think that something is very bad for you, then it works in that way. So that's the power of the mind, right? Yes. Um, so that means already that, that your thoughts can influence your body, your body system, your health, and your healing system. Um, now, also, of course, emotions like emotional stress, Anger and fear can also affect the body very much. We can talk about it a long time, but I will do it only very short. And um, a lot of diseases can be arise out of that. It can also be that we get a, a disease because some conflict or trauma is not yet solved. So then it's kind of a blocks energy in our body. Now there was a woman called Brandon Bayes and she healed herself by making, she had a, 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 a cancer of the uterus, cancerous tumor, and she healed herself by making contact with the tumor. And mm -hmm. she found out that it was an emotional trauma that she had not yet solved. And she solved yeah. it by, for, by making contact with it, by forgiving and by becoming in love. And then the cancer went away. Mm -hmm. There are other women called Anita Morgiani. She did write the book Dying to Be Me. She also had a very, uh, a very heavy uh, cancer, uh, but uh, she also did get a near death experience. And in the near death experience, she uh, became connected with a higher dimension, higher dimension which calls light or love or source. You can give it a lot of names, but she experienced a lot of love and she came back from the near death experience and then all her cells 
all the cancer cells did transform and the cancer is completely healed. So she's pretty famous already. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And she, so she says in her book, and it's, it's really impressive, the, the root cause of the disease, cancer, and of many diseases is fear. Fear and not being good enough. It's, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yes well, and I, no. There's like yeah. under category, <laughs> there's under categories of fear. So like if I look into cancer cells, there's often grief and suppressed anger. Yes, yes, well, that's what I, I, in your book on page, uh, your book, I am Elisa, uh, on page 31, you say this, uh, cancer cells and emotional memories are often linked to anger, bitterness, resentment, and feeling of not being a, uh, good enough. Mm -hmm. And on page 32, you say, uh, you, you are talking about the process of transforming lower vibrations in the body and freeing ourselves from heavy and slow energy. Filling them with mm -hmm. love, joy, happiness, and compassion. So that is a healing movement. Eh? We can heal ourselves because love is a very transforming energy. It's this effect. And that's what, what I did. I, I believe and I, I, I see love is the most ultimate medicine, right? Mm -hmm. And um, all kinds of it, it can affect anything, it can affect any energy form. Also Masaru Emoto, a Japanese uh, scientist, he, he did a lot of uh, experiments with water and then you, you put low energy, uh, bad thoughts, negative thoughts in the water, it becomes pretty dirty, the crystals in the water. And when you the crystallization love, of the yes, water. Yep. Yes, and when you give love then it's beautiful. So, so love can transform the body, it can transform the cells, the relations that we have, it can transform plants, it can transform water and earth, it can transform ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. It can also influence our own self-healing power. And because it can uh, affect everything, it can also affect our immune system. Yeah. So this awareness is, I think, very important because it can mean enormous changes for the whole, for people, for humanity, for, for everyone who's open for this. And now we live in a time that, that there is so much fear. Mm -hmm. But it is also a time of transformation. So yeah. my question to you is, can you, <laughs> can, can you say in your own words, uh, how does fear and anger work in an energetic way? What happens to us when we put anger or fear to our body and what happens with the immune system. So what we need to understand is that there's no feelings and no emotions. There is bad. It's good to have them. But when it, it becomes bad, when you suppress them and it becomes a part of you, you understand? So if you have fear, fear is okay. If you, you, if you say, okay, I'm afraid, I am feeling this, I'm transforming it. The fear comes out of my body, I replace it with peace. Then it's just flow of movement like water, you know. But if you have fear and you don't uh, allow yourself to express it and, and it, it and it starts to manifest as something in your body system, which is a constant movement of fear, then it starts doing something with the vibration. So the first thing of all is that we need to be authentic. <laughs> we need to allow our emotions, all of them. Fear, anger, it doesn't matter. It needs to be in the state of allowance. And after the state of allowance, we it's good to become conscious of um, that our main energy is love. Our main energy is light and softness. So all the other feelings of which is transforming, is transcending, is running through our system to then be let go of. What we see now is that the fear, the level of consciousness and the fear, um, stays within the system of the people because we have this thing where there's separation and so forward so so they constantly feed it with fear and disattachment so then loneliness and loneliness fear disattachment not belonging so then it starts to cramp up because it gets so much space within a person and that's when it starts to manifest and become something uh, unhealthy yes right and um, 
what does love with our uh, energy and with our immune system? Because I'm curious, what does it do with our immune system? Okay, so like love, to, have you comment on that? Yeah. Love sets us free on our immune system. What, what, if I look at the frequency of, of fear, hate, resentment, all these things, it's, it's hardship. It actually does so you are not absorbing the vitamins correctly. You are vibrationally matched to lower energy, which means that you, you take in more things to bring you more down. When you are in a state of love and happiness, um, your cells are happy. They are, they are floating around all these things that you normally are vibrationally matched to because of fear and lower vibration, you're no longer vibrationally matched to. So, so um, the, the immune system are able to, the immune system is just a word explaining our inner system of life, right? So when you are in a state of love, then that inner system is feeded with the light. Yeah. Happy. yeah. It's like it's like overdosing yourself with vitamin C and sparkles. Right, right. Well, I totally agree with you with that. But it's very important that people realize this, right? <laughs> yeah, we need to start in the small because from people yeah. to understand from for a long time, people thought, okay, a mental awareness is what makes the, the world run. And if I talk with people, a lot of people still believe this. Feelings is something you have, you can separate it. Now I'm going to focus on manifesting a mental reality with, with belongings, blah, blah, blah. If I look into these people, I want to scream because I see that they are not, they, they take half of their existence and, and they choose to not listen to it. They choose to not be conscious about the influence of all the things that they're not listening to in their system. So if we want to be a whole person and if we really truly really want to manifest wealth and a better world, we need to start simple. So teaching people that everything is energy and how you feel uh, and what you are representing energetically has a big influence on your immune system. For example, the funny thing is like now with all this COVID and number and fear and stuff, um, it, it, I would say it could grow more, but it can't really because the COVID is not what is said to be, but, but the, the fear upon it is growing, right? So more people do get ill, not even from COVID, but just in general, they do get ill. <laughs> A lot of things are happening because that, our consciousness and awareness and focus is so much on this this thing that we don't see all the beauty surrounding. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I completely agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> now, now it's another question. Um, now, um, I'm one of the, my favorite books is The Course of Miracles. Mm -hmm. And also the, the, the course of how you have to transform fear into love, you could say. And also the course of miracles said there are only two, two uh, main yeah, emotions. It's, uh, love is not a real emotion, but it's or fear or love. Mm -hmm. And they say the ego is the root cause of all suffering. And we can only feel this love completely when we become free from the ego. Then we feel how we really who we really are and um, if we and, and that, that whole book is describing how we can become free of the ego in fact it says that the ego is just an illusion yeah um, what we need to understand in this time is that every book is from a different decade and from a different state in humanity right now what people need to do is become authentic so allowing themselves, also allowing their ego, but allowing themselves fully to express who they are and love that. I believe that you, you can be loved and have fear at the same time. The problem becomes when you start fearing the fear. When you flow with the fear, it's just a part of the human experience. And we are incarnated here in human forms to have the human experience. So it's to let go of the fear of the fear. It's let go of the fear of feeling good, feeling bad, feeling anything. It's to be authentic with whatever it is. Yeah. That is the main lesson for humanity now, 2022 as well. It's really, truly focused on authenticity and 
and connection between the mental awareness and the heart. Yeah, yeah. Uh, still, I, I agree with you, but still, um, there are uh, many religions who say that uh, the, the, the deepest uh, uh, goal of life is to become aware who you really are. Right, not, mm -hmm. not, uh, not about the ego, but then, uh, but we, we feel that we in fact are also need not only a part of source, but we are source. We are source inside of us, deep inside of us, uh, and mm -hmm. only then we can feel oneness. Now, I um, now there are some people like Brian Katie and uh, Eckhart Tolle who were very depressed in some uh, in some uh, time of their life. And they suddenly became awakened of this dimension of which you, which you would call the knowing and feeling who you really are. And the ego mm -hmm. was completely solved, and, but also all fear was completely solved. And um, they were only love, and I can say they are only love. Um, so, uh, but then um, th there are more people, of course, but. Then my question of what was um, interesting for me, that Byron Katie, uh, I, I did meet her many times and she's, uh, she's spreading, she's completely love to everything, but it does not mean that she did not get diseases. She can get diseases and pain, uh, but she tells in her book very openly about it, that um, it's not a problem for her anymore. Uh, because she's in love then with the pain as she's in love with the disease. So it is not a problem for her because she can only feel that love. So that's a, a strange for me because then um, someone is really in love, and but the body is not healed. No, so what I, <laughs> what, I'm, what, what, I, what I would say is that every... Every person has a different mission on earth, right? Some people are here to say that everything is love and only love and love it can only be amen. These people might tend to bypass. So they are not linking to their body systems. They are not feeling oh, yeah. the, 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 the things in their body. They're not integrating it. They are, oh, I love it, but they don't. So for them, uh, their mission in life, they're doing what they're supposed to do, but the embodiment and, and, and the focus and the awareness of their soul's learning, they are not integrating fully. If you want to do the, 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 the whole, which is the, and we see this in a, in a lot of healers, in a lot of healers, they forget themselves. They, they get all kind of diseases, blah, blah, blah. It actually is something that, that is seen because when you are so much up in the higher layer and knowing everything is love, it's easy to forget that the body has needs and, and to roll with the lower vibrations is a part of human life. If we truly want to embody everything, we need to also give love to the lower feeling. We need to be authentic, accepting the pain, accepting the anger. If you have a disease, then look at the roots. Where does the root come from? There is an exception to this I just said. And that exception is that when you are incarnated with the soul contract that you're going to get this disease because you're going to be the representative of uh, feeling love even in a situation like this because that's going to open a lot of people <laughs> and help them to feel at ease with the same uh, disease then you get the disease because it's part of your soul contract then it's not that you are doing anything wrong then you cannot remove it because it's part of your creation and there, that can be tricky because then some people are like, okay, but why doesn't it work? This is why it doesn't work. Some people are sent here to be a representative of love and kindness, even in hardship. Um, and that we see, for example, in, in children that dies from cancer and so forth, their soul knew it already. It's not something they're supposed to change. It was something that was created this way. Yeah, yeah. But what I see in Byron Katie is that she... Uh, the, the point is when she tells uh, very beautifully that when you are in the uh, awakened, eh, so as you can call it, then there is no identification anymore with any energetic form. And so mm -hmm. you are also not identified with your thoughts uh, because uh, they are all energetic forms in the, in, in the like, concept. Yes, but if, if we want to do the human life, okay, so 
she's also not not identified with the body anymore. No, that, so and that's the whole. So everything is okay. Yes and no. So yes, yeah, yeah. internally everything is always okay. You are a soul. You come here. When you leave here, you're still the same. When you leave here, you leave your body. You leave your mental awareness. You leave your mind. You leave anything you figured out on a mental level but you keep emotionally trails uh, of your lessons in your afterlife or the life between life so that being said when you link to your highest self there is only love there's nothing else love and emotionally uh, creations which you have no judgment over the thing is that if you want to integrate it on earth <laughs> you need to accept yourself to feel what is in the physical reality accept yourself to be part of the movement that you chose in this incarnation so um so you can embody it for them and if i look inside of them they're they're beautiful and the message that they are sent here to bring is amazing but the way that they disconnect for their body i am not the body i am not the mind it's true but in this time we are stepping into 2022 it's about reunion the soul the mental and the body into one so we can be the embodiment of the authenticity that we wish to show our people because imagine that we take a take a whole series of stations and we tell them you're not your body you're not your mind it doesn't matter what you feel what you do how you treat it because you're your soul you're gonna die anyway how what will what will we do with this life if this is the power people have, if this is how they look into it, how would that influence this reality? When Perdon, Katie, and these other beautiful, beautiful being figured this out, when I am not just the soul, I'm not the body, blah, blah, blah. It was needed because people were so stuck in their mental uh, awareness and all their fears that they were not able to live. So for them to have this... <gasps> okay all the sorrow i'm feeling okay all the things i'm thinking okay all the illness i have it doesn't mean that i cannot feel good and live my life in that realization they let go of so much pressure and pain and suffering that that in itself set them free but that that's meant for a moment in a transformation it's not the full picture i think this is what i'm trying to say did it go fast? You will, you can see this online. Yes, I, I, I see it, but, but for me, it, it also um, is the message of, of Jesus, for example, and the message of Buddha, and the message of all yeah. religions. So mm -hmm. I uh, sometimes <laughs> uh, I so they all say that um, the re religion comes from religare, eh? so connecting with who you truly are, with your true inner <laughs> self. And, uh, but we can, I can also give now many English words uh, on it and it's, it's, we can, can talk long about it. Um, but um, now my, I, I do, what, what, what I do see is that, for example, uh, Byron Katie has no fears at all, I'm sure about it. And also Eckhart Tolle, also Anita Modiani describes that she has no fear. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I have a personal question to you, uh, but you did already say something about it, uh, because I, I know you as a, an exceptional uh, yeah, form of love, <laughs> if I can put it in that way, really. But you also uh, have a lot of fears, and uh, you are also am... talk openly about it. But, but when you already did say the main, main thing is authenticity and just uh, to accept all the fears, yeah, that is completely clear for me. So, but still, it, what you are a little bit mystery because the, the books say there is love or fear, right? And then I know people who have very much love and they have no fear, and you are, have also very much love, no doubt about it. Um, but also fear, right? <laughs> so that's yeah. a, a mystery for me. But you so, need to answer some things about it. I am the embodiment. I am. I am love. This is for sure. But I'm also the embodiment of our sense. What is within me is acceptance of everything there is, and that is what makes me whole. I have fear because fear moves me. Fear makes me do things and remember to exist. Fear makes me live life. Fear is something that 
um, has been a tool for the universe to keep me on earth because or else I would have tapped out many years ago. So for me, fear is not something I need to fight. Fear is something I need to learn to understand each moment of it and uh, which message that it brings and what is there for and if it's no longer needed. But it's not something that I do have resistance upon. In order of reaching people on all stages in their life, it's important that I'm not some guru sitting on a mountaintop saying that everything is love and light because people cannot relate to that. I am an embodiment of something or someone that people can relate to because I've been through hell and I feel everything. I know all expressions. There's nothing that somebody can come up with that I don't somehow profoundly understand or can see them in. So I can be the mirror that makes them feel love within themselves because of that. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, in fact, your, your main message is to be authentic, right? Yeah, yeah. For yeah. now, and yeah. in this time, this yeah. is what is needed. This is, very this is my main message. Yeah. 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 Okay, my last question before uh, the time is going to be Now, there is a lot of concepts about contagion, right? So, uh, about the contagion of viruses, uh, but. Uh, uh, love is also contagious, right? <laughs> so when yes. a person is a lot, uh, has a lot of love, uh, everyone is affected by it. Mm -hmm. Not every, not only everyone, but even the, the water, the plants, the, the earth, and I. They send out the yes, 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 everywhere. And, well, I, I myself, I did uh, experience that very, very deeply when I was with Byron Katie. I, I did feel so much love and to, to everything. And even when I looked to other people, I did. I could only see love when I did uh, see them in that period. So that was one of the most impressive uh, things that I have uh, experienced in life in, in way of love. But I also experienced this with you. <laughs> so you also have a lot of love, and I also see. Uh, that uh, many people around you, when they do a workshop or a journey with you, they, are, are, yeah, they, their vibrations are becoming rising, uh, <laughs> rising, and they accept themselves much more, and they feel, yeah, they feel very good. Yeah? That often happens. So my question is, um, we can read books, right? And uh, but the, but in fact, our world, and we need a, a person who. Embodies and emanates this love so much like you do. Um, so then my question is, uh, yeah, I, I think you do that. And what is what is your role here <laughs> on Earth? Um, so and I met other more people more like you. There's there's many people incarnated at this point. There are light beings. They come from different planet systems and different levels of awareness, and they are here to help create more balance on Earth, with implying more love and light and conscious awareness of existence. Um, of existence, exactly like me, where I come from, there is only one. Eventually, there will be four, but uh, two of them will be newborn. One of them is born. And um, so what I am here to do, I am here to bring knowledge and I am here to open as many hearts as possible, as long as I exist. And I'm here to reconnect this grid of which I am linked to and I was a part of creating before the, the earth, when we made the matrix of the earth and I wasn't a person, I was a part of the creation and I'm here to help connected right <laughs> short version <laughs> yes yes that's okay but uh yes it's uh, okay oh and i'm oh, here to uh, having a human experience because i'm allowed in a physical form in this life and that means that i'm allowed to have like all these physical integrations and feelings and whatever human does and this is so exciting and i cannot skip it because it's part of it and after this life i'm not going back to earth so I guess that's why the universe goes like, well, we just give her all in one life, you know? So here I am, experience it all. Okay, well, that's uh, very interesting, but uh, I'm happy that you are still here. <laughs> Not yet. Me uh, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and then? But you don't come uh, back. 
then okay. I will. Um, about that. I will. Uh, so, I will go back to where I come from. Sorry, it's like being a star kind of thing, right? And from there, I, I, we will decide uh, where I go next. If I choose to just be like a guardian angel helping and supporting newborn souls and, and incarnations, which I have done so many times before, <laughs> or if I uh, choose to and am allowed to incarnate in a physical shape and form in a different system. I don't know yet because this is not decided. Uh, it depends how far we get in this incarnation. Um, and if I am needed as support, like guardian angels, uh, for the incarnation of the soul streams in the lives after mine, or if we are far enough so that I can let that go and incarnate in a different system. But I don't know this yet. No, I'm okay. <laughs> no. I think that uh, maybe time is now uh, gone. Uh, there is, of course, uh, this was a short uh, interview. Uh, there is, I have more oh, questions about. Uh, we, what, yeah. We can just invite you back. We can invite you back. I would like that because there are more questions arising in me about uh, miracles. And, um, um, but anyway, I have to thank you. And uh, of course, and I'm very happy that you are on earth and that uh, I ha could have this interview with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much too. Have, and we're really happy that you're here too, Tom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so okay. for all the viewers, thank you so much for watching with us. If you have any comments or anything you want to ask me or Tom about, or you really would like him to come back with his uh, questions, just write in the comments below. We will make sure to read it and respond upon it. And for the rest, I just wish you a beautiful, beautiful week. And oh, yeah, I have to say, hit the subscribe button, push the like button, and we will see you next week. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. -bye.